The crown of kings has been stolen by the Archmage and taken across the backlands to Mampang. You have been sent to get it back, and should you fail, the whole of Kakabad will surely fall. A journey began. From the outpost settlement in Annaland, you crossed the Shamutanti Hills. Along the way, you ventured down a goblin mine and faced a terrible ogre, spared the life of a defeated assassin, and fought and killed the dreaded Manticore. You faced cruel twists of fate and disease. Test of character. To survive, you used your blade rarely and your intelligence frequently. You deceived, charmed, and tricked your way through. Your spirit guide changed as you changed, becoming the ape. But now all of that seems a distant memory, for you are approaching Kare, the city port of traps. Founded on a ford of the Jabaji River, Kare was once a camp for the pirates who ambushed merchants from sailing from Lake Lumle to the sea. But the camp grew, and it became a village. The village became a town, and now Kare is a magnet for ne'er-do-wells and thieves, ruled over by a council of villains. It cannot be avoided. You would go around it if you could, but on the far side is the North Gate, the only entrance to the backlands in the next stage of your journey. If your quest is to succeed, you must enter the city port of traps and make it out alive. Welcome back to Character Select. My name is Tyler, and with me today, again... It's Mal. Mal Havoc, that's right. And we are playing Sorcery 2, the city port of traps. By Steve Jackson. By Steve Jackson. Uh, I am the narrator, and Mal is the guy making the choices. And those choices may be good or bad, so let's get going. Twilight already. The great city of Kare has loomed large on the horizon all day, but has been slow to reach. The path tracing great loops back and forth through a deep and narrow pass. <coughs> Walk on. You have not seen a living soul except once when a dark figure raced across the hilltops overhead and then was lost from view. So you are naturally cautious when you round a bend in the path and see a beggar crouched low against a rock and muttering to himself. You stop, out of sight behind an outcrop. But the beggar does not look like much of a threat. Wait and watch. You watch in silence. The beggar is an unfortunate soul. His head twitches from one side to the other every few minutes. He mutters and murmurs to himself, You're hiding in the rocks, sir! Hiding in the rocks! Approach him. You call a greeting and stride over. He leaps to his feet, drawing a short stick from inside his cloak. Who goes there? He demands. What's your business in Kare? Greetings, old man. You have your greetings? The beggar spits back. I ask you a question. Who are you and where are you headed? I'm a traveler. The man pokes his stick at you. A traveler? Traveling where? The backlands. The backlands? He looks quite surprised. Who was in the backlands? He prods harder. Answer me, or you'll face the consequences. What consequences? Better you don't find out, he replies darkly. I am the city guard. No <laughs> one enters Kare except through me. And then, despite his age and clear ill health, he comes at you, waving his stick. I won't fight you. You tell him. You are unarmed. He waves a stick st cl uh, close to your face, jabbing a few times, but you push the point aside with one hand. All right, then, he declares. We'll settle this fairly. He tosses the stick to one side and raises his fists. The knuckles are blackened with scabs. <laughs> I feel like this is that Monty Python scene with the Black Knight. <laughs> uh, I still won't fight you. You reply. I mean it. The beggar makes a short braying noise, like a laugh, and then lamps you on the nose. It's surprisingly painful, and he is readying for another swing. 
step away. You step back, and with that, the fight seems to drain from him. He sits down again, suddenly sad. Very well, he moans. You're right, I suppose. Can't defend the city on my own. You're very brave. You tell him kindly. Am I? He looks. He asks, looking up. I don't feel brave. I'm still alive. Doesn't that make me a coward? He shivers. You don't have any food, do you? He asks, sadly. Give him something to eat. We do have two rations left. So we give him one of our rations. You rummage in your pack and pull out a hunk of bread and cheese. Here. The man grabs it and eats gleefully like a wild dog. He murmurs and grumbles to himself as he does so. <laughs> Those options. What is the point of taking him with us? I don't know. He's a city guard, isn't he? That's what he said. <laughs> Gosh, uh... What do you think? I don't know. Ah, yeah, what the hell. Uh, come with me. Okay. You take pity on the man. Come with me. I'm going into Kare. The soldier considers your offer for a moment as he chews. You're sure? I heard a word for the wall. But they will not want to let me through the gate. Sounds like we can help each other. He clambers slowly to his feet. A gleam of hope has entered the poor man's eye. Very well then, a stranger, a trade. Word to the wall. Oh, he punched us in the face and we lost two stamina. Uh, The beggar walks a few strides ahead, the ghost of a military pace in his step. What's your name? You ask. Captain Thomas of the 4th Legion. Responsible for the southern perimeter. He knocks his bony heels together. At your service. What are you doing out here, soldier? You were sent out to investigate Sightings, whole legion of us, back when the council felt bold. But then they locked the gate and wouldn't let us back. Where's your legion now? He won't answer, just shakes his head and points sharply downwards. The path winds through gorse and thick grass, and Kare squats in a basin in the hills like a stagnant, festering pool. You Lovely. turn one corner, then another, and then the stone walls of the city are looming over you. The end of the pass. <clears throat> the walls weren't built to keep anything out, Thomas says. They were built to keep people in. Kare is one gigantic trap itself. Why? You ask. Are the people inside not happy? Will you be happy, ruled by pirates and thieves? He points. Cast your eyes up. You can see them, archers, facing in both directions. You could scramble up the slope to the right to get a better view of the wall. Would you like to go into the clearing or climb the slope? Let's climb the slope. Mm-hmm. You scramble up the slope for a better view of the wall, leaving Tomas below. It seems your new friend was right. Standing atop the huge stone blocks is a guard with a longbow slung across his shoulder. Uh, Watch the archer. You keep watching. The guard above the gate looks this way and that, but doesn't shift from his position. Interesting. Uh... Is down into the pass. Alright, down into the pass. Running for it doesn't seem like a wise option. No. There's nothing else for it. You put up a hand and call out. The archer lifts a hand to shield his eyes against the sun. Who goes there? He bellows. Friend or foe? Let Thomas answer. You wait and Thomas cries back. Friend! In the watchword is Cantapani! The guard pauses a moment, then lowers his bow. Approach! Thomas Thomas turns and smiles at you. Approach the gate. The south gate stands before you. This is tall as two men, and would be broad enough to ride three horses through. If only it were open, but instead it is locked, and there is no other way into the city. Luckily, of course, 
You have a key. Over to you, says Tomas, stepping back. Unlock the gate with the Sven Chief's key. You quickly remove the Sven Chief's key from your pack and slip it into the lock. The tumblers click as the key turns. Tomas hangs back. Good work! You think it's safe to go through? Let's wait. You say. Tomas nods. A few heartbeats pass, but you hear nothing from inside the yard. Then he shakes his head. I'm going for it. Thank you, stranger. With that, he dashes away inside. You hear nothing for a moment. Then the sound of shouting voices and feet rushing away. Go in after. Slipping inside, you find the yard deserted. The old soldier has cleared it out for you. You push the great gate closed, key still in the lock. Whoever the next ruffian to visit Kare may be, he'll be grateful for your little gift. <laughs> well, that worked out better than I thought it would. Well, we'll see. You pause just inside the shadow of the gate. To your left is a lone stone building with metal bars for windows. Uh, what? Let's hear it. Hold. It says duck behind the... I'm guessing that's the building with the bars for windows. This building right here. Okay. And then there's the actual yard itself. Yep, you are in the yard right now. So you can either hide duck behind, behind this building, building hi get go it. into the building, or run this way. Uh, let's go behind the building. Okay. You hurry over to the wall of the building and crouch down. A heartbeat before two soldiers come round the corner. The building means you're covered, but if they spot you, you will have nowhere to run. Perhaps using magic might give you an advantage. Let's see what spells we have available. Indeed. I am a mighty wizard. You are wizard. a sorcerer, after all. You are technically a wizard, because your spells come from a book. From a book, yeah. Alright, so you have telepathy. You can read minds. Doesn't cost any stamina. Does not cost any stamina. You have sap, which causes them to become depressed. <laughs> you have uh, sus... Which senses danger. Uh, we have mud, which I don't think we can cast. I don't know why I can't click there, but, uh, so, but we don't have sand. sand. And we got zap, so we can lightning them. I don't know if shooting we or have killing guards pop, is a good so idea. So we can explode them. <laughs> oh, and we have pep, but we don't have fire water. Yeah. Um, let's do telepathy, see what they're thinking doesn't cost anything, so let's exactly. do it. You slip the skull cap on your head and cast your spell. The thoughts of the nearest guard enter your mind as clear as if they were your own. It seems he has been sent by the Watcher on the wall. It also seems he thinks the Watcher is an idiot. It seems he has a bunion on his toe and wants to get back to his dinner. The guards slide open a small panel set into the door and look through for a moment. Then they snap it shut and march away. You straighten up and hear a noise through the barred window of the stone building. A sneeze? Look through the window. The building might prove might be useful. It might be a storehouse, or better yet, an armory. Standing on tiptoes, you peer in between the bars. Not a storehouse, then. The building is quite bare, except for a wooden bench on which an old man is sitting. Uh, attract his attention. You wave at the window, but the old man doesn't look up. He seems to be staring very determinedly at the bench, or per perhaps he is asleep where he sits. Uh, try the door. You go over to the door of the building. The key is still in the lock. Uh, go inside. You turn the key and unlock the door. The small room is dark, lit only by the narrow ba barred window. It takes mo a moment for your eyes to adjust to the gloom, so you don't notice that the door, which must be heavily weighted, has swung shut until you hear it lock behind you. The old dumb. man who is watching sniggers with contemptuous glee. All right, continue. Do you greet him or ignore him? Uh, greet him. You step for you step towards the shadowy bench. Greetings, old man. He ignores you. 
He is concentrating hard on something on the ground just in front of him, a collection of small stones scattered as though for fortune-telling. After a moment, he gathers them up and tosses them again. You notice that his other hand is missing completely. The left sleeve of his tunic hangs limp by his side. Uh, cast a spell. You glance upwards towards the stars, and suddenly the old man shouts, A sorcerer! I knew it! What of it? Well, he answers, you'll get us out of here. But better yet, I've not played anyone for months, and surely not anyone <laughs> smart. Sit down, sit down. Play what? Why, the man replies with a shark-like grin, swindle stones, of course. Swindle stones? You ask, intrigued. Stranger in town, don't know how to play, better and better. He shows you one of his stones. It is a strange four-valued die. Sit. He pats the bench beside him with his one hand. Play. We can talk while I beat you. You'll have to teach me the rules. My lucky day, he grins with his one remaining tooth. It's easy. We roll our, we each roll our dice in secret, but we bet on what we've rolled in total. You call if you think the other player has bid too high. The loser gives away a die. You go over to the be- the bench in Trigwade. Uh, it's basically Liar's Dice, if you've ever played that. The old man drops four dice into your palm and steps and sweeps away a patch of dust on the bench for you to play. I'll go first, he says, waving his hand. Show you how it's done. Hmm... The game is simple. We roll and bet on what's come up. So, for instance, I might start and bet that between us we've rolled at least one one. Okay. So, but we don't know what's on the table, so I'm guessing one two. Mm. If you believe my bid is too high, you call and we check. Otherwise, we keep bidding higher and higher. So he uh, thinks that there's at least two of the fours. How do you... Oh, there we go. Okay. I'm going to bid three threes, because I have two, and he might have at least one. And my, my own bid must be higher again, and less likely to be true. And now I think you have bid too high, so let's see who wins! He probably has no threes. No, he has one, no, so I win! He loses a dice. The fool. Oh, that's what I oh, like to see. Uh, so, so what's your name? Doomed? Well, now, the name's a powerful thing. What would you like that? to bet? Well, I mean, we have to... Um, you want to do that one, or this one? Let's do that one. Alright. You do know your name, don't you? Hmm. <laughs> My name doesn't matter anymore. Used to be someone, but these days I ain't. We'll do three ones. Yep, I like to know the names of the people I meet. Yep, (laughs) fuck you, dude. (laughs) Four ones. Now he's down to two, and the advantage is ours. I'll start with one five. Uh, let's do twos. One, two? No, two twos. Yeah. Alright. Try this. I'll raise that. Two fours. Um. Could maybe do three twos, but. Well, he's got. got Let's do three twos. If he has a two, then we win that. Yep. Oh, you are bad at swindle stones, dude. <laughs> oh god, three dude, twos. Wow. You are f- you are fucked. <laughs> so, so tell me, what do they serve for food in here? <laughs> I hope you like raw. Ra- wow. Good thing I brought my own provisions then. Uh, let me see. How about that? I mean, there's literally no way he can win this. Yep. 
So there we go. I win, don't I? The old man nods, gathering up the dice. I went easy on you. Of course. Rematch. Thanks for the game. You say, standing once more. I enjoyed beating you. Pleasure was mine, the old man says bitterly, putting his dice back into his pocket. He leans back against the stonework and hums quietly to himself. So he might have been someone, uh, important. Let us, uh, see if we can't talk to the old man. See if we can't get some more info. Otherwise, we can just dop the door. Dop the door. You take a seat on the other bench from the old on the other bench from the old man who is fussing with his empty sleeve. Tell me how I can escape this place. You turn to face the old man. Tell me how I can escape this place. Oh, it's simple enough, he replies. In a day or two, the guards will let you out. Once they've decided you're not an enemy, they just take a while to consult one of the mages. Alternatively, you just cast a dop spell and we walk out now. He shrugs. Up to you. <laughs> you stand on the bench once more. Well, let's just go ahead and dop our way out. Oop. You go over to the door. Locked, of course. From the outside. Cast a spell. It's like, why do I need to touch things? I can just, like, magic them to death. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that, that's how, like, I've played this whole character. I'm like, you know, I could go in and fight... You aim the spell of opening towards the door and slowly, quietly, let it go. The locks rusted tumblers click over in response. Very good, very good! The old man chuckles. Let's check outside before we just waltz on out. You check outside. The yard is empty. While you have been locked up, the sun has sunk below the wall. You should be able to walk right out of here under the cover of darkness. The old Let's man go. is less cautious. He is up and out of the door like lightning. Let's get the hell out of here. The old man is spry, despite his age, and is quickly far ahead of you. You seem to be forever rescuing old men. First from the tree outside Kantopani, and now from prison. <laughs> Alright, let's go to the junction. At the end of the yard, the road splits. Looking left, you see the guard lined up in rows, running drills. Best not to head that way. To the right... The road leads towards the first buildings of Kare. You can just see the old man disappearing off in this direction. Let us go down right and not and towards where the guards are doing <laughs> drills. <laughs> Excellent. And we will go right next time on Character Select. So next thank you all time. very much for watching. Oh, <laughs> Click so that like sorry. button down below. Uh, subscribe if you want to. Ding that bell. And uh, we will continue the adventure in Kare, the city port of traps, next time. Mal, what do you have to say? There are seriously a lot of old men in this game. <laughs> mm-hmm.